Hey now, I'm back and I have a new iPhone 12. So let me know if you see an increase in quality in the video. I have no idea. But anyways, it's Saturday. I thought I'd throw up another video before I go see my Tigers start and try and make history. It's be the worst team ever in baseball. They're on pace to outlose, if that's a word, to the 1962 Mets. But before I do that, I wanted to show off what I alluded to a couple of months ago, and that is my other Eddie Collins autograph. Now, the autograph itself of Eddie Collins is not that big of a deal. It's who's with him and on this program, and of course that's going to be Eddie Plank. Uh, Eddie Plank won over 300 games. He played his career mostly with Philadelphia. He also dipped into the Federal League, arguably one of their best players, before retiring with the Browns and then going back to his home in Gettysburg, where he actually was a tour guide at the Gettysburg Battlefield. What makes his autograph so rare is that he died in 1926 very suddenly of a stroke. So obviously this is 10 years before the Hall of Fame was even really an idea. So players and people, I should say, were not are uh, going out and getting his autograph very active. Uh, there's probably a couple signed baseballs I've seen out there. His family did release one full signed envelope as well as a letter he wrote, but he only signed it Ed. So finding any type of Eddie Plank autograph is really tough. I know REA released an endorsed check about five years ago, but there's a lot of doubt with that check that it was forged and somehow just got through the PSA system. I'm not going to judge, but you can Google it. There's a lot out there to cause doubts about that autograph. So just finding any Eddie Plank autograph in the open market is very tough. I got very lucky when I got mine. It's probably one of only three out there that's actually dated which I'll talk about in a minute. So without any further ado, let's look at one of the toughest autographs you will ever see of any 20th century Hall of Famer, and that is Eddie Plank. So what we have here is a 1913 banquet program signed by three Hall of Famers and Harry Davis. Now, of course, the rarest by far is Eddie Plank. We'll get to him in a minute. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Harry Davis. He's a fairly uncommon signature and probably a lost member to baseball history, but he was actually quite a slugger for his time. He's actually one of only five players to ever lead his league in home runs for consecutive years. And as a matter of fact, he actually led the first decade of the century, 1900s, for home runs. Quite a power hitter. If you go to the Louisville Slugger Museum, after Ty Cobb, when they have the list of all the players that signed with Louisville Slugger, he was number two. So he is quite a, like a lost player to baseball history. Below that, we see Eddie Collins and Connie Mack. And this program itself is actually quite rare. I don't know if you could see it or not, but it was dated on November, I believe, 13th, 2013. Uh, it was, uh, sorry, November 6th, 1913. It was thrown in Eddie's honor. He just won the World Series again with Philadelphia, and he's there with some of his teammates. Uh, I've seen this program unsigned go for close to $1,000. It's that rare. But here, again, I saw this at Golden Auctions, and it's a beautiful Eddie Plank autograph. I don't know if you could... Let me zoom in here just a little if I can. The K just flows. I don't know if you could see the... Oh yeah, right there. You see how the K just flows? It's really nice. And Plank is like again such a tough autograph to find i probably have only seen four or five in my lifetime that have uh been in the open market uh, i saw this not too long ago at golden auctions and i got it for a steal to be honest this was before golden exploded and they were just having issues like right before the auction closed someone hacked the software and they would lock up so this was pretty cheap. I won. I woke. Sorry, I woke up at about one a.m. in the morning, and I saw the auction was about to go live again. So I put in a low bid, stayed up like the twenty minutes, or extended bidding time on the lot by lot basis, and I was just shocked when I won it. Uh, they had a couple other great pieces in there: a Cap Anson signed letter, a Mickey Welsh autograph. They all went for way below market value, but this by far was the nicest piece. Like Bill, the Hall of Fame collector, it's dated. You know exactly what date this was signed. In addition to that, again, you have just some, it's incredible. I know it's signed in pencil, but actually pencil's not that bad. 
The nice thing about pencil is the fact that it doesn't fade, unlike pen. So I really don't have to worry about storing. That being said, whoever framed this did a beautiful job. It's an archival glass. Uh, it's kind of large. I thought about taking it out and just either putting it in my safe or getting it reframed. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's an amazing piece. I take it out and I can steer it for a good 20 minutes. Uh, Eddie Collins, like you know, I have another. Connie Mack, I actually have three autographs of his, including a full name, Cornelius McGillicuddy autograph that he signed on a letter. But, like, again, next to Eddie Joss, this is arguably, Eddie Plank is the rarest Hall of Fame player that played in the 20th century in the major leagues. So uh, just let me know what you thought. I'm just curious. Uh, that's about it. I'm going to go watch the Tigers lose now. And as always, keep collecting.